Hi guys, I'm Bree. And I'm Allie, and this is Off Script. If you think about it, books are potential scripts for movies. When this adaptation happens, typically it's disappointing because they went off script. In this series, we will be talking about how off script they went. Hello and welcome. Are we going to sing every time now? No. <laughs> It's off script. Doing it like that because I had to move my microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm Allie. I'm Bree. And we compare books to their movies. Counterparts. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. Sometimes it sucks. Sometimes it's great. Who knows? What's it gonna be this time? A mixture? Maybe. <laughs> Stay tuned. Bree giving away the end. <laughs> <laughs> So we're doing Paper Towns this week. Yes, we are. And yeah, we, let's see, our picture. My sciatica is acting up. Yeah, you just stretched for a whole good 10 minutes there. Mm -hmm. Well, I realized halfway through my stretch, I realized just how tight that muscle is and how badly I need to be stretching. But I'm, ha ha. Oh, that's a big knot. Oh, next time I get a massage, I need to have her work on that. Dude, I need a massage so bad. I love massage. I know. I haven't gotten one since pre-children. That's not true. Since Hawaii. <gasps> oh, that was so good. <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> Ridiculously expensive, but man. Far too expensive. It was nice. Probably <laughs> shouldn't have spent that much, but nope. damn. <laughs> if I were there, I'd do it again. <laughs> I... <laughs> I got what four different things, dude. You did. We're talking about at Alani, the whole Disney resort and spa. Man, Aww. it was so nice. I got him. What made me get a massage the night before? Because you wanted the one I was getting. <laughs> I said we Why shared with a bougie. <laughs> <laughs> we shared what we were getting, and you're like, ah, oh, that one sounds so nice. Maybe I'll try and go get it right now. And you could. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I did. Because that also, like, that then. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even know about spas and, like, the fact that you can go in for an hour before your massage or whatever it, you haven't done. It was so fancy. And you fancy. can, like, hang out and go into the hot tub or do the polar plunge or take some showers in the rain showers or just lay in the Hawaii sun. It was freaking gorgeous i would just go back <sighs> just for that like me the, too the spa and everything or the massage and everything was awesome but mm -hmm. man just to go do that plunge dude i miss the rain that plunge. showers plunge was amazing oh man yeah <laughs> i know i am i every time i go to like i don't even go to a gym i don't know where i'm trying to say that i go <laughs> But whenever there's a hot tub nearby, I try to look for. <laughs> I'm like, can I where's do the, the ice? Punch? Where's the ice? <laughs> I thought I was gonna hate it, especially so the night before when I just went and did my one massage. Uh -huh. I only put my big toe into that polar plunge, and I was like, oh, that's too. Cold. I know you weren't even gonna do it. I made you do it. No, yeah, you were like, oh, I want to do it, and I was like, crap, I can't chicken out if you're doing it. <laughs> so I gotta do it. <laughs> And it was so fun. It was so fun. And it's actually really good for your body. Yeah. So then I try to take it. Because what you can do is when you're showering, after you take your nice hot shower, you're supposed to put your water in it very cold. I know. I heard that. Mm -hmm. And I've, I try to do it every once in a while. I can do it to where it's like not ice cold, but I could do it like where it's a little chilly, but... Sometimes I can do it for long, but sometimes I turn it and I'm like, screw this. <laughs> yep. I'm like, how did I do that? No how did I do thanks. that plunge? <laughs> it's because we did it opposite. We got cold and yeah. then went hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we ended up doing that twice. I know. I enjoyed it. I miss Hawaii. I know, me too. <laughs> I want to go back so bad. Me too. <laughs> I wish it didn't cost so much. Oh my gosh, so much. <sighs> okay. All right, let's do it. So, oh, the animals. I feel like Snow White. Yeah. 
Or Peter Gross. Piper is it? Oh no, he does the kids. No, he does the, <laughs> he does the animals. <laughs> Doesn't he? I don't even know. <laughs> is Peter Piper when he pipes Peter both? Piper picked a pop 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 those are the pack of peppers, but no, there's Peter Piper. He <laughs> he plays like an instrument, and like don't all the field, all the mice come, or is it all the children? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, Let us know, please. Oh God, Allie's dying I'm to know. I'm dying to know. <laughs> Anyways, all right, here's our synopsis. After an all-night adventure, Quentin's Quentin's mm-hmm. lifelong crush Margot disappears, leaving behind clues that Quentin and his friends follow on their journey of a lifetime. On their journey of a lifetime? What did I say? You said there, but it's on the journey of a lifetime is what you have written. Oh. <laughs> well, isn't the same thing, pretty much? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Author John Green, director Jake Schreier. Schreier. Okay. Screenplay writers are Scott Neustadter. Okay. And Michael H. Weber. What did he write? He did another one of ours. Did he? Yeah. I don't know. He did one of them. Let me see. The spectacular now. I was going to say that, but I wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. I knew it. Good job. Thanks. An audiobook reader was Dan John Miller. It was pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. It wasn't boring. It was... Well, that's good. I liked how he read Ben. Ben was funny. <laughs> I love Ben. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so the book came out October 16th, 2008. Hey, it's my niece's birthday. <laughs> Wrong year, though. And movie June 18th, 2015. Mm-hmm. Seven year difference. Mm-hmm. What'd you do first? I read it first. I watched it first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Okay, mm-hmm. what are your initial thoughts? I wanted it to be a bigger story than it actually was. Yeah, because it, it was a pretty anticlimactic ending. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I, I liked the ending because it wasn't the fairy tale ending. Yeah, yeah. No, it's perfect how it ends. Uh-huh. But I think if like, I think if fifty percent of the story was like the road trip, then maybe yes. Rather than the road trip being a twenty nine hour thing that's done in the last like. 20% of the book. Yes, cuz it was a it was a much bigger thing in the movie, the road trip part mm-hmm. than in the, the book. book. Mhm. Yeah. I agree. Yes. Yeah, I'm kind of on the same thoughts. I I enjoyed it. Um I saw it first, so let's see. I guess I was surprised by the end cuz you know, yeah. you go yeah. in expecting one thing mm-hmm. and then something else happens. Mhm. And so, but I enjoyed it. I like, I liked the characters and everything like that. So it was a, it was a fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And why'd you pick it? John Green. I love John Green. I was so excited to read one of his books because I've never Mm -hmm. read his books before. And I really, I am excited to read his others. He's a fantastic author. Uh, And I also picked this one, especially because the other two are heavy. And you uh, are not really? a huge fan of heavy. No. So <laughs> I had to ease you into it. Kind of like what I did with Stephen King, where I went, okay, this is going to be an easier one to get her hopefully hooked. You said one of his is five feet apart? No. No, that's not him. Mm-mm. No. Oh. His are The Fall of Mars Stars and Looking for Alaska. Okay. Never mind. And he's got Turtles All the Way Down, which is actually being made into a movie right now. Ooh. Mm-hmm. We'll do a... a Real time one, maybe we'll play. Oh, yeah, I would love that that because you know, I'm gonna be seeing that right then. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) (laughs) all right. So, 
Allie's Super Fun Facts. Let's do it. These fun facts, you guys, there was like, it was slim pickings. I just want to tell you that. Like a bunch of them were like, this one actor was in The Fault in Our Stars also. Or this <laughs> one act, or this, uh. Okay, but I loved that cameo. I know. I freaked out. I like, I think I blocked out this movie because when I watched it today, I was like, <gasps> Ansel. Uh, <laughs> but it was like, it was like 90% of the fun facts on IMDb were like, in the book, it did this, but the movie, it did this. I was like, no, that's, that's what we're going to do. That's me. That's what <laughs> Bree and I do. No, you can't do that. <laughs> Give me actual facts. Oh, no. So, sorry if they're not the best. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, number one. In an interview, the cast admits that the scene where Q, Radar, and Ben sang the Pokemon theme song mm-hmm. was added to the movie per Hans- Halston? Halston? There you go. Sage and Justice <laughs> Smith suggestion i love that i laughed so hard because <laughs> it was is it justice smith yeah that goes on to detective pikachu yeah oh <laughs> <laughs> i was like oh my gosh what's funny is he's in the new D D movie and yes i saw a commercial with him in it yeah and i sat there and like for some reason my brain always wants to put him in percy jackson i don't know why uh-huh. and i'm always like how do i know him and i'm like it's gotta be percy jackson <laughs> But then I always land on Detective Pikachu, and I was like, oh, that's probably exactly where. Yep. So then when I watched it today, I was like, this is actually where I know I'm from. I've just oh. completely blocked it out. <laughs> well, yeah. Pikachu. That's great. Yeah. But mm-hmm. number two, whilst working in the producer's room, the executive producer, John Green and author, was listening to Taylor Swift's <laughs> album, 1989. So in another singing take, instead of Pokemon, they were all singing Shake It Off. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> I like that. I thought that was a cute one. Okay. Number three, the SeaWorld scene from the book is not in the movie. And this is because oh. the movie Blackfish yeah. had just made people rethink SeaWorld and captivity. That makes sense. Uh huh. And so... If they were in the movie, people would possibly boycott this uh, and the box office would oh, not be very happy. So they decided to just that's leave it out. funny. I was wondering. Yeah. Because they talked about it. Uh-huh. But they did not go and do it. Yep. Okay. So John, number four, John Green is the producer of the movie and he also had a small role as Becca's dad. And Becca's dad. Oh, he's yelling at her. Yeah. Because you never see him. You never see like, him. I was like, I would have s- known. <laughs> no, you just hear him. Oh, I love that. You got a little cameo in there. I love that. Yep. I also, John Green is always on the sets of his movies. Good. He should be. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I like that. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> 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 Number five. Kara. 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 Mm-hmm. Delavinji. Delavanji. Delavinji. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Delavine. <laughs> oh, dang them. <laughs> Delavanji. <laughs> is she French? Is it French? I have no Italian? idea. Italian? I don't know. Delavine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she wasn't the only person considered for the role of Margot. Shailene Woodley. Woodley. Was originally cast, but she had to drop out because of Insurgent. She should have freaking did this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I really liked Kara. Kara? Kara? Kara. 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 No, I do. I mm, I like her and I don't. But I love... Because Shailene is in The Fault in Our Stars. Yes. So I would have absolutely loved that. <laughs> Also I didn't know that she was actually cast. Yeah. I didn't even know that she was in the running for Margot. Yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, a fun fact I didn't put on there was that Kara mm-hmm. is also a professional model. And like in 2014 alone, she brought millions home. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what is she even acting for? Like, yeah. why do both? Yeah, <laughs> I know. You don't need Pick to. Pick one and be lazy. Mm-hmm. Alrighty. Are we ready? Yeah. Okay. 
So the book kicks off. Margot and Quentin are childhood friends, sort of. Like, not besties, but they're friends. They're neighbors. They're, they're hangout. forced friends. Yes. And they're playing at a park together, and they find a dead guy just laying <laughs> on the tree. And Margot's, like, fixated on this, and she's, like, has to solve the mystery of what happened. And Quentin's, like, no. sounds like me. <laughs> yeah. He's, like, no, this, no, no, I'm... <laughs> I'm good. It, leave me out of this. Bye. And she basically leaves him out of it and they stop being friends. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that happens in the movie. Yep. But I did say right off the bat, I love the music already. <laughs> <laughs> I had no music fun facts for you. Sorry. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Actually, you did. What was it? The Pikachu? Oh, the Pikachu. I did have a yeah. music fun fact. You're right. Da, 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 da. Okay, so Quentin and Margot lost touch and they drifted apart and they're now seniors in high school. And Quentin still loves her and he just is like staring at her like, oh my gosh, Margot. Remind you of someone? (laughs) 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 Guys, I had a crush all throughout high school. (laughs) I definitely for sure did this too. (laughs) Just stared at all the time. Uh So prom is about to happen. And uh, and he and uh, Quentin has two friends. Ben, who's dying to go to prom <laughs> with all the honey bunnies. Is that what he called them? <laughs> the honey bunnies. <laughs> yeah. And Radar, who's like this huge nerd who basically is like the editor for Omnictionary.com, basically Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he has a date. And they're like, how does he have a date? Like, <laughs> who would want to go to prom with him? And, uh, but Quentin hates prom. He's like, this is so stupid. I'm not even going to go. And he's at home chatting on I am with the guys and Margot rolls in through his window. Mm hmm. In the movie. I made a comment that the book is basically the script for the movie. They did pretty Mm -hmm. good at keeping it very verbatim. Probably because John was on set the producer yeah and yeah basically he's like do you want my money yeah (laughs) you do it the right way please uh i really liked in the movie one of the first times you see Margot as a teenager is on halloween and so you see i call quentin q because that's what everyone calls him in the book um but q's costume is he's dressed up as an ipod (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh that. yeah that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah and basically everything else is the same okie doke so margo convinces q that they know need to go on like this revenge adventure and he's like no i don't want to break any rules she's like we're not gonna do any felonies we're not gonna break and enter places and first they have to finally she convinces him they have to go shopping get all the material and then they hit up one of her friends' house who's sleeping with her boyfriend. So she's her friend is sleeping with Margot's boyfriend. And her best friend. Her best friend. So they bust them having sex. And he runs out naked. And they get pictures of him and all this sort of stuff. And then they put a stinky fish in her house. And they signed it. She did a big M. Spray painted M. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, why would you want to, like, leave your tag mark? Because she wants to show that she does not care. Catch her if you can. <laughs> so irritating. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of Margot. <laughs> I really liked Margot, but there were things about her that I was like, um, why? Yeah, I just, I don't like her. <laughs> and then. I think that's my biggest problem with this book, because this whole entire book, like, idolizes Margot. Because Quentin has that crush on her. Yeah. And so you're seeing it through his eyes. And I'm like, dude. She's red flags all over the place. Yeah, left and right. Like, honestly, he probably had a chance with Lacey if he wanted. Yeah. So then they go to another friend's house, Lacey, we just (laughs) mentioned, (laughs) who was one of her best friends since kindergarten. And she should have told her because everybody knew that Jace, her boyfriend, was cheating on her. So they squished a fish in her car. 
Then they went to another friend's house. And they had to leave an apology flowers because she did say that her <laughs> Jace was cheating, but Margo didn't believe her and called her a bunch of mean names. Yeah. So then after that, they go to like a skyscraper downtown and Margo's just talking about how they live in a paper town and how she wished that she chose Q over the life she did choose and all this sort of stuff. And Q got to choose the last victim and he's like, I don't have anybody I don't like and... But Margot ended up getting him to choose someone. And they shaved well, off. Margot basically was like, what about this person? Remember what he did to you? Mm-hmm. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And they shaved one of his eyebrows off. And the last thing was that they wanted to break into SeaWorld because she's never broken into SeaWorld. She broke into all the other amusement parks, but never SeaWorld. Mm-hmm. And uh, like breaking in a freaking snake bitter and like. Mm-hmm. all this sort of stuff mm-hmm. i was like <laughs> no thanks i mean it was just a like a little garter snake but still Ooh. yeah yep um and then when they're saying goodbye after the night is over she's like i'm really gonna miss doing things with you and he's like you don't have to miss it you can come sit with us tomorrow type of thing she just kind of smiled and left in the movie they only do nine of these things because like all you said they don't go and break into sea world and uh i don't think they give apology flowers no no they don't give the apology flowers but everything else happens cool 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 okay so q is hoping things are going to be different or do you got more i just have a funny anecdote okay because uh this night margo kept calling them ninjas and they were like, yeah, we're the fastest ninjas. <laughs> One of the things that me and my prom date did before prom, like leading up to prom, when we were going and picking out like our flowers and stuff, is we called ourselves ninjas. <laughs> so I just kept thinking about that. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so Q hoped things would be different at school now, but Margo wasn't at school. And Q shared about all their adventures to Ben and Radar. And uh, Jace ended up picking on some freshmen and Q decided to stand up for him. He sent him like a little snarky little email saying like, you will stop or uh, the whole world's going to see this picture. (laughs) And it was the picture he took of him naked that night. And uh, so, yeah, this didn't happen in the movie like this. Uh, All that happened was Jace went to go and fight Q and Q was like, did you see this? And holds up the camera with the picture. And then Jace stops, which I'm like, Jace literally could have just taken like, the camera. <laughs> taken the camera or pressed delete on the camera. Right. right <laughs> and that's the last we really see of Jace. Yep. So, um, next morning, uh, Q wakes up and Margot's parents are there and a police officer is there and apparently Margot is missing and her parents are so over it like they're like this is like the fifth time she's done this like we're just done with these games she plays and the policeman took uh how you uh, just said that <laughs> it sounded like you're like the police man <laughs> oh <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's like the police officer took him to in the back and it was like okay listen to me Q we got to find this girl because like it's not gonna be good if we don't find her like where do you know where she is she's, he's like I really don't know where she is and um he goes back to play video games with Ben and he notices Margo's window shade is down and there's a poster on it which has never been there before this basically happens in the movie except for the police the police aren't really in the movie yeah he there's like a detective there but he's not as Mm -hmm. uh adamant about finding her as Mm -hmm. they were in the book so they went over to investigate and they had to pay rosie uh margo's sister ruthie oh ruthie Mm -hmm. oh i'm pretty sure actually i think you're right they had to pay Ruthie like five bucks. Mm-hmm. So uh, they investigate and they find out that this was a music poster. Did I say movie poster earlier? Or just poster? <laughs> I 
<laughs> he did say Wooey poster. Okay, no, it's from a, a it's Woody record. Guthrie. Yeah. And so then they find that album, and that leads them to a Walt Whitman book. And in the Walt Whitman book, there's highlighted things. So it's all these clues, and they're trying to figure out where she could be. Mm -hmm. So in the movie, when the boys go over, first off, it's all three of the boys that go over to look at... um, Margot's room, not just Q in bed. Because no, Radar was there too. He go in, He got on her computer. In the book, oh, but in the movie, he tries to get on her p- computer, and well, Ruthie says no. I was just gonna say the big difference here is that Ruthie watches them yeah. in Margot's room and is like, "What are you doing? You can't do that. Yeah, you can't do that." And then. Basically everything else. Oh wait, no, they don't find the Walt Whitman thing isn't a thing in the movie. The book? Yeah. It's only the music album. Oh wait, no. No, it's in the movie too. Yes, it is. Yeah. I don't remember them finding it. It was on her bedside table. Oh. Okay. Because something was circled in the. I was gonna say I just remember it because they get to the door jam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I will say that Radar is barely on Omnictionary in the movie. And that's like his whereas literally purpose. every other line from him is, this is an Omnictionary. Yeah. <laughs> in the book. <laughs> um. Okay, so Lacey comes up to them at school to talk about Margot, and she... Uh, Ben ended up asking her to prom. Oh, because Lacey's prom date, like, they broke up. Because her prom date knew about Jason Becca. And she was mad that he would have kept that information from her. Mm -hmm. And so Ben asked her, and she said yes. And Ben's like, oh, my gosh. And uh, Q has determined that the clues are talking about a door jam. And so they go back to her room and they look at all her door jams, but nothing's there. So he, they're just stumped again. And Lacey mentioned that she had talked about going to New York. And uh, so they store that in their brains. And Q... Which also makes me laugh because literally if they just listen to her. I know, because they store it in their brains and then don't act on it for a very long time. Mm-hmm. Um, and Q finds a piece of paper in his door jam with an address on it. And he's like, how did she get it there? When did she do that? What? And, uh, it goes to some sleazy abandoned strip mall. Why did you call it a sleazy? I don't know. It was like <laughs> sketchy and sleazy. <laughs> you put sleazy, I think like, it's where like the strippers go. <laughs> oh, I guess. <laughs> No, it was like there were dead raccoons and stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> why oh, so I'm like, what? Um, okay, so... A lot of this happens just later and not exactly how it happens in the book. Um, so, in the book, only Q goes to Margot's to look in her door jams he like radar and him come to the conclusion that it's the Walt Whitman book it's giving him directions so he's like okay I know what I need to do so then he goes to take off her door jam but then there's nothing there and then he goes and is hanging out in his house and he sees the note sticking out of the door jam I'm like yeah, you really didn't see that prior. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like I would have been like, "Why is what's that?" Um, and then basically, Lacey comes up and talks to them at the school, but like Ben only hits on her. He doesn't ask her to prom. He just finds out that she is available to take to prom, and he tells Q and Radar. That he's going to take her to prom, but he never asks her out right here. Mm-hmm. 
and in the movie he actually doesn't ask her she asks him Mm -hmm. so what rude then they go to the sleazy strip mall (laughs) okay catching on sleazy Mm -hmm. all right so they're really worried what they're going to find because the more they read this Walt Whitman passage, they're like, oh my gosh, it sounds like it's a suicide note almost. Like, So they're worried they're going to find her dead because it stinks and everything and then, no, it's a dead raccoon. Well, especially because the Walt Whitman poem, a lot of what is said in it can be misconstrued as a suicide note. Yeah, that's what I just said. Oh. <laughs> I didn't hear you talk about Walt Whitman. I just heard oh. the suicide <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said Walt Whitman. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, um, so it doesn't look like anyone's been there in a, for a while, except they do notice some like pinholes in the wall and like certain things here and there, but they end up leaving. And uh, when they go into the mini mall in the book, they have to go in through like this hole in the wall, yeah. not through the main doors in the movie. They go and try the doors. And I did think it was hilarious because Ben goes up and shakes it and like really tries his hardest. And it's like, it's locked. And then Q goes up and does exactly what he does. <laughs> I wanted Ben to be like, dude, I just said it. It's locked. I know. <laughs> but then Q leans up on the door and it's like, well, what are we going to do? And then he falls backwards. Yeah. I was like, uh, it was a push, not a pull. Okay. Oh, I didn't put that together. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that makes no sense. <laughs> this you is why I ben. always. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, this is why I always have trouble with the doors. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. He lied and told his parents that he was going to go to prom. So that he could borrow his mom's car. And he ends up going back to the strip mall looking for more clues. And he decides to stay the night there. Because if Margo can stay Mm. the night here, he can stay the night there. I also forgot. Okay. This first time that they go in, they find a message that was written on the wall for Margo about paper towns. But they don't think anything of it. And they just keep walking. Silly, silly, silly. So then at 3 a.m. rolls around and he's woken up because he gets a drunk <laughs> phone call from Ben. At 3 a.m. rolls around. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's drunk at a party because they're at the after prom party and he needs a DD. So annoyed, but he ends up going. So I thought this was sweet because... He is annoyed that he has to go get Ben and Radar, but then he like hangs out for a little bit. He hangs out because he can tell that they're still having fun. He's like, okay. Yeah, I thought that was sweet. Mm -hmm, Me too. And so um, he decides to go to the bathroom, but all of a sudden Lacey's sitting in the tub, like like empty tub, just sitting there in her clothes crying. (laughs) And he sits in the tub with her and they chat and she says that she just... I want to help find Margot because she misses her best friend. And she's worried about her. Mm. And Becca is spreading rumors about her right now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So in the movie, <laughs> in the movie, this is a party that Jace is throwing. This is not prom and this is not the after prom party. Nope. And Radar was supposed to be drunk too, but Radar is sober as all can be. So I'm like, why did they call Q? Right. Like, it makes no sense. And uh, Radar's girlfriend, Angela, isn't at this party, and she's supposed to be because it's supposed to be the prom after. Party. Right, right. <laughs> and in the book at this point, Lacey and Ben are basically kind of dating already, obviously, because they just went to prom together. But in the movie, they're not even together. Because, like, in the book, they have kind of a conversation where Lacey, like, is talking to Q about Ben Mm -hmm. in, like, a relationship kind of way. In the movie, that's just not a thing. Right. Because they aren't going to prom together yet. Oh, and then, for some reason, 
tell me why Q is wandering around at the party and walks into a random room and finds a map <laughs> and is like, I have an idea. But I really liked that uh, <laughs> in the book and movie, Ben is so drunk, he <laughs> super glues together a beer can yes. sword. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I loved that. Ben was fun. Oh, and then they end up going to the mini mall when they're all drunk. Well, yeah. And Lacey comes and follows them. And is like, hey, I thought you guys found her. So, the next day, Q wanted to talk to his friends about Margot. Because that's all he wants to talk about. And he gets pissed because... I would he, get annoyed. I which know. is funny because I was Q, <laughs> <laughs> i swear every time he started talking in the book and movie i was like dude just shut up <laughs> so he got pissed at ben though because he calls ben at 10 a.m after ben has been up like until like five super wasted so ben has this horrible hangover and he's pissed at ben dude he's probably he's probably still freaking drunk yeah <laughs> like my gosh for sure and uh how dare you right and so he calls radar and the radar's like hang on yeah i just threw up hang on one second Mm -hmm. but he comes over and he's talking to ben and he's like you know what you gotta love or he's talking to q he's like you gotta Mm -hmm. love ben for who he is like i love you for you even though you just sit there and talk about margo you haven't asked me about my and angela's relationship at all but you know what i know that that's you and so i still love you yeah i just love that scene mm-hmm. i was like mm-hmm. i was so like good true. on you i'm glad you brought that out yes for him. yeah and so they go back to the strip mall again and they find a couple guys exploring it and they said that they saw margo a while back and she seemed pretty depressed she's writing in her little black notebook mm-hmm. that does not happen in the movie okay so we find out Raider's parents, the people, so they collect black Santas and the people with the second biggest collection just died. <laughs> so they have to go and get it, which now means their house is empty and they can have a another party. Mm-hmm. You'd think that they'd all still be too hungover for the first think. <laughs> And so... Q is reading the Whitman book again, just getting frustrated. So he pulls his map down because they had pinpointed ma- a map to mm-hmm. figure out where she was. Because they found a book that had like the top like weird tourist attractions, like mm-hmm. biggest ball of yarn and stuff like that. Biggest ball of cheese. Yeah. And so they pinpointed it and he was just got frustrated. So he pulled it down and he realized these pinpoints match the pinpoints or they're the same at, like sort of did they match mm-hmm. it or were they similar like similar similar to the ones in the wall at the strip mall so immediately he's like K- or radar we gotta print out a map go back mm-hmm. that's what the, they did the <laughs> map is basically what happens in the movie just at the party yeah and so, and they don't throw a second party in no. the movie, but Radar's parents do have a big black Santa collection. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> Except for in the movie, they say that they're trying to break the Guinness World Record, and in the book, he clearly say, like, says like says that they're not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're already the biggest. <laughs> like, mm. yeah. So, okay, Q is on omnictionary dot com. And he found an article about paper towns. Oh, because uh, Radar created this whole brand new search thing Mm -hmm. that like, yeah, I don't even know. He somehow was able to basically make a website where you can pinpoint locations that you wanted to. And then it would basically GPS it out for you, but tell you the best routes to take and... And he'd give you information about him mm-hmm. and everything. So he found He's this a brainiac. I know. He found this one on Paper Towns. And this town is called Argo. And it's in New York. 
and it has a population of one. But because it's um, dictionary like Wikipedia, people can go in and edit. And so someone said population of one until May 29th. And it was like, <gasps> she's still alive. And uh, Q woke up and his parents got him a brand new car <laughs> for his graduation. But it's a minivan because he loves driving <laughs> his mom's minivan. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and uh, Q told his friends that, you know what? I'm going to go find her. I'm ditching graduation. He went and told his parents and they were not pleased, but he went and did it. Mm-hmm. But then Lacey, Ben, and Radar joined him. Mm-hmm. So in the movie, from them going and putting the map up on the wall, they find the thumbtacks on the floor and they put it in the map. And they're like, look, we found her route. And they go on their road trip here. <laughs> yes. But in the book, Margot has written that she's population of one until May 29th, but <laughs> I, think you, I just now read what you called the town. What is it called? It's Algo. Oh. Argo is a really good movie. <laughs> I know. When I typed it, I was like, I know that's ben a movie. Affleck? Right. I was like, it's Algo? A- A-L-G-O-E. Oh, this is what <laughs> happens when you only do audiobook, you peep. <laughs> Just so you have people now. <laughs> you peep. You people. I was like, that's not a full thought. So let me re- <laughs> say what I'm trying to think. I've been doing this for too long. <laughs> so then um, their deadline is because everyone except for Q doesn't want to miss prom. And so they're like, okay, let's do this so that we can get back in time for prom. But then Radar's like, we have to do one thing first. And he has to go and apologize to Angela because he went to the party and she didn't know. And her storyline is all kinds of screwed up. Yes. My next note literally says the last 40 minutes of the movie fucked up. (laughs) It was very different. Like I remember watching it the whole first half. I was like, you know what? It's pretty, like, they're going to nail it. Yeah. And then it was like, <laughs> what <laughs> happened? It was like this fork in the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll let you go. Okay. So now they're on their road trip. And like I said, it's just the four of them. But in the movie, Angela comes along too. Um, Brie will get there. Mm-hmm. And I so- already got there. You said that they went and apologized. You didn't say oh. she tagged along. Well, then I was going to forget. <laughs> so good job. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say it there. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's like this 19 hour road trip or something like that. So, but to make it back in time or not it b- back in time to make it to Margot before she, before left. she leaves. Cause it was like May 29th at like noon or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they had to, get there they had to drive 72 miles an hour four stops maximum and like all this sort of stuff Mm -hmm. so uh lacy's helping them get all ready by writing up shopping lists for them so they can do the world's fastest pit stop it was like a six minute pit stop and ben had to pee so bad he ended up filling up like two bottles of uh oh because they had beer two beer cans yeah beer 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 bottles yeah they had beer in the car Mm because they were gonna because mm-hmm. from radar's party he threw or that he was gonna throw they had 212 beer bottles left <laughs> yeah. i guess so um and then at one point they almost hit a cow it was everyone was sleeping except ben and uh q, q was driving and ben pulls the car to swerve and like Every, is the hero he's the hero and he's like no i was only doing it because i didn't want to die and everybody's like we know you love us thank you <laughs> yeah. that was one of the funniest parts <laughs> well i love because uh the three guys are such close friends that they do this thing where they're always like do you remember when and they always like talk about like did you, their did past you ever memories. do that yeah yes all the time <laughs> but uh they after this happened they would just be like do you remember 20 minutes ago when ben saved our life <laughs> it's like shut up remember that one time we almost died yeah. because of the cows <laughs> <laughs> in the movie 
this kind of happens, except for one of my notes is the minivan's Q's parents, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like in the book, but in the movie or like in the book, it's his. Mm -hmm. In the movie, he never gets one. Nope. So it should be his parents, but he literally just left without really telling. I know. Like, Sorry, I have your car. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, in the movie Ben spills pee on him in radar, which is gross. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh huh. Because they spill. He that was their reason because at graduation, because they they left at graduation, like they were mm-hmm. getting ready to walk. They were in their robes. Yes. And when they were all drunk. They agreed to streak. Yeah, so they were, they were, the guys were going to be naked under their graduation gowns. And so here they are on this road trip naked with their graduation gowns. Yes. So they were like, at their pit stop, they're like, okay, get us us shirts. shirts. Yeah. And so this is how they got shirts. Because they got the right shirts. Well, they got, because in the book, they only got radar uh, shirt because Ben had to pee. And so they grabbed (laughs) shirts and it was a what was it it was a racist shirt yeah it was a confederate flag that said hate i don't remember what it said i can't remember either it was a very racist shirt and he was like great guys you get your token (laughs) black friend the most racist shirt there is (laughs) and then later on in the book they end up getting him a replacement shirt, which is world's best grandma. Yeah. But in the movie, Ben gets the world's best grandma shirt and Radar gets the racist shirt, mm-hmm. which I'm kind of glad they at least kept that little thing in yeah. there. But it was funny. Yeah. Um. Oh, my next note is Q never in the movie. Q never at all thinks that she's depressed and trying to commit suicide. It's always just, oh, I'm going to find her. I'm going to find her. And the cow thing happens, but how it happens is because everyone's awake and they're talking and Q is turned around talking to people behind him. And then Ben swerves them. But then they sit there and wait for like AAA to come (laughs) and fix the car. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, okay. And so then this is when Lacey asks Ben to prom. And then... Angela and Radar have their own little romantic moment, but I thought it was cute because we got to see Angela finding out about Radar's parents' Black Santa collection Mm because he wasn't inviting her to his house for that reason. Because he was so embarrassed. Mm Mm-hmm. And you can go now. Okay. Um, So I'm at the point where they finally get to the paper town and they find Margot. And she's pissed. She's like, why did you come here? And they're like, you left us all these clues. And she's like, no, I was trying to hide the clue. Like, I was trying to take everything down. Which I'm like, but then why did she put paper in his door frame? Oh, you didn't, I didn't get pay it. attention to that. Uh, no, tell me. She said that she liked that space. And after that night with them, or with him, she realized that he would probably like that space too. Oh. And she wanted to pass it on to someone. Like she was like, if I can't enjoy it, I want someone to enjoy it. And so she she wanted left. him to find that mini mall. Okay. So that he could have a place to go and chill. But then once he got there, he then pieced together where she had went. Got it. Okay. <laughs> That's sweet. I loved the little sketchy mini mall here. Have it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and so Q's like, well, and everyone's pissed because she's yelling at everybody, right? Mm-hmm. And so they're like, we're going to go to the car and find a hotel to stay in for the night. And, uh, and Q's like, you could have like said all this nicer. They wouldn't be so mad at you. And she's like, yeah, I know. I just, you know, I just hated my life back there and I just had to get out. And I was going to do it after graduation, but I just couldn't take it any longer. And uh, I just wasn't happy. And um, she gave Q some closure that he's not in love with her. He doesn't need to be in love with her. He's in love with the idea of her. Yeah. Basically what Radar told him about why he was pissed at Ben earlier. Mm -hmm. And they promised to write to each other. Mm -hmm. That's the end of the book. Mm -hmm. So the movie after the 
AAA comes. They drive and they find this abandoned barn and they sit and they wait and she's not there and they don't find her. But then they all are like, okay, but we got to go because prom's coming and Margo's clearly not here. And Q's like, no, we have to stay here. And basically his friends were like, dude, I just wanted to have a fun road trip with you for our last time. Like, mm-hmm. we're about to be going off to college. We're not going to be able to hang out together. But we really need to get back for prom. And Q blows up at them and is like, no, the whole purpose of this was for me to find Margo. This mm-hmm. wasn't fun. And I was like, what an ass. I know. It was not very nice. <laughs> So then his friends leave to go to prom and Q hitchhikes to go to a near train station after he sits there and waits and Margo's not there. And then he finds Margo in the town of Roscoe where he's hitching his train back or his bus back. Uh, Margo doesn't have a car, which was the thing that like they were able to find her car and that's how they knew where she was. Uh, Q like I feel like the movie made Q seem even more in love with Margot like mm-hmm. in the book it was his crush for sure but it was like I feel like he had such a good time with her that one night that he wanted to like he was chasing that feeling almost mm-hmm. and it wasn't like all of his friends were like, oh, you're in love with her. Oh, you're her knight in shining armor. Oh, go be her lover. Yeah. Like the movie did. I swear. They, like, Ben was like, dude, you're in love with her. Just say it. You're in love with her. And he's like, yeah, I'm in love with her. And then at the end, she's like, why did you come to find me? Because I'm in love with you. Right. <laughs> I'm like, erg. <laughs> in the book, too, Q gives, well, Margo makes Q give her his phone so that she can call her mom and then talk to her sister. Mm-hmm. In the book, as Q's getting on the train to leave, he's like, do you want to talk, do you want to call and talk to your sister? And she goes, oh, don't worry, I've been calling her every day. Which I'm also then yeah. like, so she sat there and watched you guys go through the room. And she knew right where she was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then... Q gets on a bus to go back home. He goes to prom. We see them. Well, we see them get ready for graduation. And we can tell by the fact that they're not wearing pants that they are going to streak. And then we get a nice little goodbye. We're off to college. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of the movie. We did it. Yep. Cool. All right. So IMDb cast 64 people for this movie. Yeah. Okay. So let's start. We got Nate Wolf. Nat Wolf. Nat? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I knew I was going to do this. When I was typing that up yesterday, I was like, I'm going to say Nate. I know <laughs> I'm going to say Nate. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Good job. Way to know yourself. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he played Q. <laughs> I love... I was really excited because I thought... <laughs> thought he was his brother and i was about to talk about how much i love him in hereditary <laughs> but that's not him nope i like him just like i like his brother yeah <laughs> i just saw a movie with him in it are you sure it's not the brother <laughs> they look so much alike <laughs> i don't know no i'm pretty sure Dang it, what movie did i just watch paper towns <laughs> really Dude, it was his brother. <laughs> what in the That's world? That's hilarious. We both just did the same no thing. What way. movie? Jumanji. My brother and I just oh. rewatched it. I love that movie. That's so funny. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, They're they like, look are they so twins? much. No. Oh my god. Alex is older. That's craziness. Yeah, I was so excited. I was like, I cannot wait to be able to because Hereditary is one of my favorite movie going experiences. Really? Yeah, and then when we when we when i was watching the movie why did i look i can't remember why i looked something up on imdb but i looked something up and i sat there and i was like nat wolf i swear his name's alex (laughs) i 
it and looked and I was like, oh shit. Do they even have like the same birthmark on the face and everything. Mm-hmm. Ugh. That's maybe they are twins. I thought Alex was older. Yeah. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh my gosh. Well, I thought he did good. Yeah, he did good. Okay. <laughs> I love his brother though. <laughs> Maybe his brother would have done better. <laughs> All right. Kara. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kara. She played Margo. <laughs> De Levine. De Levine. Yeah. Okay. She was fine. I liked her a lot. <laughs> All right. Austin, I'm sideways. Austin Abrams, Ben, he did good. I really liked him. Yeah, he was perfect. Mm-hmm. Justice Smith, Radar, ah, amazing. Yep, I love him as Radar. Yep. Um, Halston, what? Mm-hmm. Sage, mm-hmm. Lacey, she was good. I liked her a lot too. Yeah, yeah. and Jazz Sinclair, Angela she was good i liked her yeah for the random character that she was <laughs> i know yeah is the theme of the book and the movie the same yes yeah mm-hmm. love story ish i was gonna say you call this a love story well it is for cute, cute. Until, <laughs> yeah. until his hopes and dreams yeah. are crushed it's a high school friend story yeah 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 do the characters stay the same yeah yeah i think so yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which do you prefer? Book or movie? Uh, you go first. Because I have to think. I do too. <laughs> uh, okay. Like, I really love elements of both of them. Uh-huh. That's where I'm having trouble with. Like, in the movie, I love that Angela is in it. Yeah. With them. I, I love the road trip aspect of the movie. The road trip. Uh-huh. Because it was almost the majority of the movie, mm-hmm. basically. It was half the movie. I love... But then in the book... You know, you love the details and I love the reality of the book. Uh huh. And I like in the book that they weren't racing for prom. They were racing for Margo. For Margo. Mm-hmm. And so then it wasn't at the end, it wasn't the friends pissed at um, Q. It was the friends pissed at Margo. Cause mm-hmm. I didn't like how that whole ending happened. But it was so that he could come back and be like the hey i'm sorry like yeah. i showed up for prom yeah um but i liked i liked margo and q's talk more in the movie because she wasn't as pissed off it was like mm-hmm. more of a like oh my gosh like what are you doing here chat then. what's funny is because the whole entire movie too he's like i'm six months older than you but that last scene she's the one who's older like yeah she's kind of got her head on straight yeah and like you shouldn't have come out here like i it's sweet that you did but no right so there's like elements mm-hmm. that i like from both so it was a really hard choice i think i like the movie more yeah i don't know <laughs> you have to pick <laughs> i really thought as i was reading it i was like oh my gosh you're gonna have to pick I know. Uh-huh. That's what I was thinking the whole time. <laughs> and then I was like, when you watch the movie, this will be easy. And then I was like, oh, no, it's it not. won't. I do think I have to go book. Book? Yeah. So the theory continues. Mm-hmm. Holding true. Holding true. All right. Sneak peek. We've got a mini sode coming at you. And it's actually going to be... I'm so excited that a lot of these books that we're reading lately have discussion questions. I know. It makes our lives so much easier. Yes, it does. But we also, as always, like if you message us, we'll chat about it. We'll answer questions. We'll yeah, include you in yes. the podcast. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. I also wanted to say that you guys should rate and review our podcast like yes please that's the best way to help out a podcast yes five beautiful stars (laughs) please (laughs) share with friends and family uh xyz yeah (laughs) 
And then on Monday, what we got, Allie? Brokeback Mountain. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read this. I have not read or seen it. I've seen it forever ago. I think it was after Heath Ledger died. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was when I was, actually, it was right after I fell in love with Donnie Darko. Oh, well, there you go. And Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm excited. Let's do it. Yes. All right, you guys. <laughs> we'll see ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for sticking with us. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, we would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed, rate, and reviewed. You can also follow us on Facebook at Offscript, Instagram at Offscript Podcast 21, and TikTok at Offscript underscore pod. Shoutouts to Madame Ashen Creations for our adorable logo art. And Adam Daniel for our incredible theme song. And to Creative Cinephile Productions for producing our podcast. See you, See you next time. time.